Welcome everybody. Thank you for being here on the last day of the conference when everybody is already almost leaving. And well, uh, the title of the conference uh, has something like challenge accepted, and it's really, really a challenge to uh, get all this stuff working. And if you combine that with the demo gods, it's even worse. Okay. <laughs> So today we have a, a really good challenge uh, ahead, so let's get started. So I have a very few slides. I, I was hoping to do more demo stuff, but my friend Raspberry Pi, which we've been friends for many years, so <laughs> I've been doing Raspberry Pi since the very first version almost, and I've been doing demos all the time, and well, you know, the demo gods. Sometimes they are with you, sometimes they are not. <laughs> so today is one of those days that they don't really like to, to be merciful, so we'll see what, what's going on. Okay, so basically, mm, regardless the demo challenge, uh, the challenge today is uh, to get Java 11 on a Raspberry Pi. First challenge. And the second challenge is get JavaFX 11 running with Java 11 on a Raspberry Pi. So be before we get started, how many of you know about JavaFX? Right? And how many of you know about JavaFX 11? And do you know that JavaFX 11 is not no longer part of the GTK? OK, so this is not a problem. On the contrary, uh, we have a great opportunity to, uh, from the community pr uh, perspective, have an open source project in the OpenJFX repo, and everybody can benefit from that. So, we have a, one challenge, which is uh, Java 11 itself, and the other challenge is JavaFX 11. And this is kind of difficult right now on desktop. So it's even more difficult on, on a Raspberry Pi. And we also can add to the picture like uh, cl cloud connectivity or uh, adding some sensors with uh, GPO readings and so on. So uh, all we are going to try to do today is very much as experimental at this point, but uh, I have to tell you that it is working. It will be pretty much flicky today, it will probably break, but it works, I can assure you that. So, for Java 11, uh, the main issue is uh, either Oracle or OpenJDK uh, distributions, uh, they are only providing, uh, so far, Windows, Linux, and Mac. Okay, so how do we get a Java 11 distribution running on ARM on an embedded device like a Raspberry Pi. And the other challenge as well is in JavaFX 11, in the OpenJFX repo, it only provides as well uh, builds for Windows, Linux, and Mac. So how do we get a JavaFX 11 for ARM? And if we manage to get JavaFX 11 for ARM and Java, one, uh, Java 11 for ARM, uh, how we add that? the Raspberry Pi, how we play with them. Do we have to go to the, mo to the modules, to the module path, add modules and so on, like after Java 9 we should do with every other project, or is it something different? So we'll see how it, how it goes. So uh, at Gloom we, we have solutions for for Java, JavaFX on mobile, and we also have been doing uh, JavaFX for embedded. So uh, we have solutions for Android and iOS that are more or less uh, up to Java 8. We have solutions for iOS with Java 9, but not there yet with uh, 11. So we we have uh, Bloom Mobile for the UI, we have Bloom Cloud Link for connection to the enterprise, to cloud services or backends, and we have uh, Charnam, which now we 
and rebranding it to glue and attach. So for instance, we can uh, access all the native service from your device, like uh, the camera, the GPS on a mobile device, or if you were uh, running charm down on a Raspberry Pi, you could attach like an MVC card reader or a sensor detector or anything uh, like that to the GPO, etc. So uh, we have a, from the uh, perspective of the number of platforms we can run uh, Java and JavaFX, uh, we, we have all the possible platforms for from this, uh, starting from desktop or going to mobile or going to uh, embedded devices as well. We, we had a few sessions uh, yesterday and we still have a, a the session today and another session I have later on about uh, mobile. If you're interested, you're welcome to attend. So uh, we are going to base uh, our little experiment today on a real case we, we had in, in Belgium. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, I, it was supposed to be explained by Johan Bosch, which is not here, who is not here today, because he had to leave earlier. So he uh, he just told me that uh, I could explain it a little bit myself. So here I am, and this is um, uh, a working project they have in Belgium. They use uh, these cars to uh, access to the museums. So these NFC cars, uh, you go to, the, to that kiosk and there is a Raspberry Pi there and you log in there and uh, everything from that point works. So uh, this is a real uh, scenario where you have to uh, use all these uh, things we, uh, we, we are trying to explain today how to, how to use it. Um, even if it's a Raspberry Pi, it makes things like, like this is a toy or this is a pet project, but uh, further than that, on the contrary, this is something uh, real, uh, really serious for uh, real projects uh, uh, in, for in the industry or any, any cultural events or any other uh, features you, you may require. The, the Raspberry Pi will provide uh, a good solution for you uh, in many cases. So we have a mobile app uh, where you can scan the, the, the cars. We have the Raspberry Pi. We have a backend system, cloud system, and like, uh, like a, a real uh, more complex project. We have all the ingredients here uh, in, this, in this case. So we have uh, Raspberry Pi, the NFC card reader. Uh, we have a display. And in the software side, we have Raspbian and Java and JavaFX. So a few pictures. This is how it's, uh, the Raspberry is set up in, a, in this uh, small kiosk. So basically, uh, you will have a Raspbian distribution for your Raspberry Pi. And you just go to raspberrypi.org and they always provide uh, updated images for your, for your Raspberry Pi. Uh, how many of you have already tried to play with Raspberry Pi at home and install Raspberry, uh, sorry, Raspbian and so on? Okay, so many of you. So you are familiar with this and that's good. So next steps we are going to to cover is how we get Java 11 uh, on a Raspberry Pi. So I was saying that uh, the, the, the Java distribution you get when you you, were, uh, you install Raspbian is not uh, Java 11. <coughs> so far, they still distribute uh, Java 8 from from Oracle, which is okay, but uh, you cannot run Java 11. So if you go to uh, OpenJDK and uh, try to find a uh, distribution for uh, the Raspberry Pi, you won't find it. So how do we get uh, Java 11 for ARM devices and for 32 bits, which is the case for, of Raspbian? So there is a company 
called Belsov. And I will just go here to the link. So this is Belsov, and they provided they provide a, a custom build that you can download from GitHub. And you see they provide different solutions for 32 or 64 uh, platforms or architectures. And you see Linux, Windows. So here, in this case, we will pick or we will select this uh, ARM 32 bits. And that will give us a JDK 11 which, as you can see here, it was released like 17 days ago, which is pretty much in line with the latest uh, OpenJDK 11 version, but built for ARM in this case. So that, that will allow us to have uh, Java 11. Can we switch, please, to, to number two? OK, so I apologize for the resolution on the screen, but it was a very, very last minute solution. I have my display here, but for some reason it was switching off. Uh, after a minute of being on. So I have to switch to HDMA, and I didn't have time to play with resolution. So I went, I'm just going to show you that, uh, if you can read on the screen. So it, I just uh, CD to opt JDK 11. So. This is the, the folder with uh, bean and all the different files you get there. So we can we can switch back to one, please. Okay, thank you. And yeah, the the setup is really easy. So what I'm going to do is uh, just go back to uh, internet. And we have a we have a technical doc where we explain how you can do this setup on the Raspberry Pi. So basically, this is all it takes. You just download to your laptop and then do an SCP to copy to your Raspberry Pi. Or from the Raspberry Pi, you have connected to internet. You just do, we get. A and the, this URL with the ARM version, which is the most important part here. Linux, ARM32, OK? Once you download it to your Raspberry Pi, just uh, unzip it and move it to opt, for instance. And then you can just uh, see that, oh, I, I didn't, sorry, I forgot to. Uh, run Java minus version, so you can see that what you get will be something like this. So you will get an OpenJDK version. You, you won't see there Java. So you will see this OpenJDK version uh, 11 Belsoft and the time of release. OK? So that's the first part, getting uh, Java installed on the Raspberry Pi. If you have any questions, for sure, go ahead and just ask. And So second part, uh, going to JavaFX. So if you know about the recent uh, release of Java, K, Java, Java 11, uh, there was uh, this announcement a week before uh, Java 11 was released about JavaFX 11 being released. So there is this community uh, site where you can just go there, openjfx.io, and you will find all the information related to JavaFX 11, how to download it, 
or how to start developing. So if you haven't played around with JavaFX 11 yet, I will suggest you go to this link here, getting started. And it will show you how to start with JavaFX 11 on your machine, or Windows, Mac, or Linux machine. So once you have Java 11, there are a few things that, if you haven't played around, play around with JavaFX 11 yet, uh, you will get some, something different from uh, what you were used to, to do running below, 10, below, below 11. So the main part here is that uh, once you set your path to 11, uh, you will need to work with the module path, so you point to your files, to your jar files from the SDK, and you will need to use your module. So whether you are on modular, uh, you are, you're running a modular project or not, you will need to use this. So even if you are on the class path yet, you will need to use module path and mo add modules. So first thing first, how do we get the SDK on our machine? So uh, you were used to have the JavaFX bundle with the JDK, right? So if you still want to have an SDK, you will go to this link. And you will have JavaFX 11 for Windows, for Mac, or for Linux. You see here the SDK and the JMods. So for now, probably you would like to download only the SDK. If you want to run on Raspberry Pi, we have an experimental early access for Raspberry Pi. So in this case, for our experiment here, we will download this version. But if you are still playing around with JavaFX 11 on, to get started on, on, on your machine, I would suggest you will download first, for instance, the SDK for Windows, and then you will try this Hello, Hello World, Hello FX sample which is quite simple, but to get started with JavaFX 11, is, uh, it seems that it should be quite easy and straightforward, but sometimes people uh, are having issues uh, getting started. And I've been uh, answering a lot of questions on Stack Overflow, so let me just uh, send you to this uh, tag. So if you have any questions about JavaFX 11, please go to uh, openjfx.io, go to GitHub, you can file issues, or you can go also to uh, Stack Overflow. There are a bunch of questions already there. Um, for instance, one of the... Let me check that. Yeah, this one. This is for IntelliJ, but applies to pretty much all the IDEs. So here I have set a few uh, steps based on the starting guide. I just uh, pointed out first. Um, a few steps to get started with this HelloFX on IntelliJ, but uh, there are other ports for NetBeans or Eclipse as well. So if you have any issues, just come here or create a, a new question and so on. Okay, questions so far? Good. So, once we download the, let me go back to this. So, I just uh, show you the, the early access we have for ARM. So this is how you install this uh, SDK on your Raspberry Pi. So you will download the SDK for ARM, in this case, uh, unzip it, move it to uh, your uh, folder of uh, JavaFX SDK, and this is it. So this should be enough to uh, have Java 11 on one side and JavaFX 11 on the other. So with that, we could uh, start doing a HelloFX uh, on Raspberry Pi, and so on. So let's go back here. Okay. 
Okay, so we have a, a few demos today, but I'm not sure how, to, how that's going to turn out. So let's see if we can go ahead. So first demo I have here is uh, JavaFX 11. Hello. Hello FX or just hello world. And with NetBeans, there is a, a way to run, sorry, create your project on, on your machine and deploy it to Raspberry Pi. Okay, so uh, they have something called remote platforms. So you can select your Java platform, Java 11, and so on, or you can create your uh, remote platform. Okay, so here you set your host, you place the, the install folder where you have your Java 11 distribution, and with this, if you have connection to your Raspberry Pi, it should work. Uh, probably it won't work for me now, but it should be something as simple as this. So uh, it is working. So could you please switch to two? Yes, it is working. So uh, now I cannot uh, touch the screen. Well, I could, I could install my mouse or probably with the keyboard. Probably with the keyboard, let me try this. Uh, yes. So uh, that's running JDK 11 Belsoft which is pretty much what I told it to say when you click on the button. Okay, so just print out the Java version. Okay, so this is a very f simple sample, the most simple you can get, but it's good enough to uh, get you on the right track. So can we switch back to one, please? Uh, it may seem that this is a regular JavaFX sample where you just place your application class, you can use FXML or not, your controller, and you see only these three files, nothing out of the ordinary here. But there are few extra things you have to be aware of. So I will go to properties. Uh, I will explain why I'm using JDK 10 here to compile on my machine. I will explain in, in a minute, but before that, uh, I will point you to these uh, BN options we have to set to make it work. So, first, first option, module path. So, we install JavaFX 11 on the Raspberry Pi on this path, opt arm 6 hf sdk slash lib. So, if you go there, you will find your javafx.base jar, javafx.graphic jar, javafx.controls, and so on. So you need to add this path to the Raspberry, uh, sorry, to the command line when you run uh, Java and your jar. The next thing you have to do is add modules. Which modules? In this case, I'm using controls. Uh, you, will, you will be using controls probably in most of your projects. If you have a button or you have a any, any other control, you will use it. And I'm using FXML, so I have to add both, both modules, JavaFX controls and JavaFX FXML. And then I'm printing, uh, this is optional, but this is not optional. You have to add minus D embedded equal mod, uh, monocle, which is the, the condition we need to run on a Raspberry Pi. And we also set Glass Platform Monaco as well. So this is all uh, listed here in the, in the uh, technical document we have. So yeah, yeah, those, those options are listed here. So pretty much the, when, when you run on command line, you will have this on Raspberry Pi, we always have to use sudo, so we get access to the mouse events and so on. So sudo, java, from your uh, java11 distribution, minus, minus, module path, 
the path to SDK to the JavaFX SDK, the modules you use, and the platform uh, monocle, and then your main class. Okay. So this is what we are doing for our first project here, which sorry was uh, this hello world with JavaFX. So I mentioned before I was using uh, JDK 10. The reason for that is uh, if I switch to 11, uh, I have to I have to re 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 reboot NetBeans for that. But if I switch to 11, NetBeans with an ant project uh, doesn't work yet because uh, the ant uh, builds they have are still f uh, thinking about JavaFX being part of the JDK. So this is not the case. And if you run on 11, all these uh, classes won't find uh, the application class, the JavaFX classes, and so on. So it's a little bit of a trick here. As I said, this is quite a experimental so far. And uh, we, we had a, a <coughs> A few days ago, we were trying to. Uh, we, we actually we created some issues on, on the Apache NetBeans uh, issue tracker, so uh, we get JavaFX 11, uh, the proper support for and task. So it works fine if you are using Maven or if you are using Gradle, because Maven and, and Gradle will uh, retrieve the artifacts from the repository from Maven Central and they will add it to your uh, IDE. And the, 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 tick, the, the, the trick here is don't use ant with JavaFX. So you can use Maven, Gradle, or you can use a Java generic project without uh, JavaFX. But then you can add uh, the path to JavaFX and use JavaFX, of course. So the next sample I have was this uh, one we are listing on the website, which is this uh, sample. It was created a while ago just for the release of Java 8. So that's why we have uh, the, the, the title based on lambdas. So there is a repo for this project. And you can clone the project. And here, the, the idea is, OK, I will clone the project on my machine. I will compile it on my machine with Java 11 from my machine. And I can run it if I want on my machine, of course. But I want to run that on the Raspberry Pi. So what I'm going to do is uh, copy from my machine <coughs> to the Raspberry Pi the classes I compile it on my machine. I'm copy them to the Raspberry Pi. And then I will move to the Raspberry Pi and run it from there. This is one way. The other way is, uh, sorry, what I did before. Uh, create a platform, run with the same command, uh, sorry, with the same VN options from command line, like uh, the module path and the monocle platform here. So I will use, again, uh, this remote flat platform so I can uh, SSH all the classes and run it from my machine. In fact, I'm still running uh, the other project, so let me just kill it first. So if you haven't checked this, it's quite convenient because uh, you don't have to move from your NetBeans IDE. You see. Uh, here you see, for instance, connecting to Raspberry Pi dot local port 22, which is the SSH port, and this is the command line we are running. So NetBeans takes care, uh, takes care of, of that for you, and you can see it on your console. You can see the logs on your console, and it's quite convenient. So let's try it with the Lambda project, and first we will uh, run it. And OK, can we switch to two, please? OK, so it's running. Uh, 
I had uh, my configuration set for my screen that I was going to use, but since the screen is not working anymore, now it's taking the whole screen. Uh, I don't know, oh yes, I'm, I'm using my keyboard. So that's working. Okay, so it was a very, very nice sample to get some graphics and some blend expressions going on here. But for us now today, the important part here is to show that you can run JavaFX with graphics, with images, with everything you have up to date with Java 11, JavaFX 11, and it's running. So, as I said before, it's really a challenge to get here <laughs> and show that screen at this moment. And yes, it's running. So, no, I'm not sure if you have any questions so far. Okay, so I have a, a last demo to show you today. Uh, let's see. Can we switch back to one first? Thank you. So, this is a, a demo of, a, we are going to use Glue on Maps. Glue on Maps uh, uses uh, OpenStreetMaps and you can uh, place any uh, JavaFX layer on top of the map. So you can create some graphics and uh, like polygons or shapes and you can place them on, uh, on your map and interact with the physical location of uh, with latitude and longitude coordinates. So this is a very simple demo as well. And the idea here is, uh, first of all, use maps on 11, which requires some uh, changes on Glue maps. So we have to uh, You, you go to GitHub. We have um, a master branch with uh, maps for 8, 9, and 10. But if you want to go to 11, we have a JDK 11 branch where you will find uh, some fixes so we, we can use modules with maps and so on. So we are using this, uh, sorry, this uh, 11 version. So I want, I'm going to show you now the uh, build for this project. So this is a Gradle project and you see a lot of snapshots there. I said at the beginning this is experimental so bear with me <laughs> on this, at this point. So one of the new things you, you find when you run JavaFX 11 on Maven or on Gradle is you need you need your uh, JavaFX jars. You can get them from Maven Central, which is really nice. You don't need them anymore with your SDK. On Gradle, you need controls, graphics, and base, and a classifier. So if you don't know yet, uh, each jar contains, not all of them, or not, sorry, each module contains, or may not, con may, or may not contain native libraries. So these libraries, obviously, are uh, depending on the platform. So you need this classifier, so this is why uh, we get on which machine we are running. So first you get your JavaFX components, then you can get your maps, for instance, and then we, we are going to use uh, cloud solutions, so we are going to run uh, maps with a small task uh, simulating a GPS, so like if you were with your car uh, running your and you have your Raspberry Pi and you have a GPS sensor and you are uh, tracking uh, coordinates and you will be sending them to the cloud. You could have uh, on your machine or on your mobile an, another application listening to those coordinates. So we are going to uh, install some uh, 
components, some artifacts here that will allow allows us to uh, access the cloud. And we have we have also some plugins to access the storage on this device. So uh, we have a four snapshot for charm down. We are trying to refactor this to use modules, and it will be available in a few in a few days or, or weeks as well. So. I said before, you is either you are running a project, a modular project or not. Your uh, you are using JavaFX modules, so you, for that you will need to use module path, and you have to use add modules. So in this case, uh, both for compiling and for running, you need to set the module path and your modules. In this case, controls and maps. Okay, so basically this is a. a regular Gradle project running 11 that will work on your machine. And if you want to deploy it to the Raspberry Pi, you can do like uh, a zip on your machine with your classes. And since you are doing Gradle or Maven, all the artifacts will go to the .m2 repository. So you can zip your m2 repository, zip it to the Raspberry Pi, and zip it there, and so on and so forth. That's one way, of course, and then you can run Gradle on the Raspberry Pi. So I did that, uh, and of course uh, it works, but whenever you change something on your machine, then you have to do it kind of all over again. So uh, this is also experimental. This is not also working properly at this point, but <coughs> if you were uh, using Bloom Mobile for your mobile projects or for embedded projects before Java 11. And you may know that we have uh, the mobile plugin also working on embedded. So we have this little task here that uh, allows us to create a remote platforms like NetBeans and using your coordinates for your, master, for your Raspberry Pi, you can SSH everything you have on your project to the Raspberry Pi. So basically, we'll create a, a task that grabs all, the, all your jars, send them to the Raspberry Pi through SSH, and we'll provide uh, all the command line uh, options you need, and so on. So it kind of works, but this is not ready for 11 yet. So it, this is the old uh, JavaFX mobile embedded configuration we have. But it's convenient only for sending all the uh, jars and whenever you change something on your project. But after that, you have to go to, uh, to the Raspberry Pi and run manually from the command line with the VN uh, option. So this is what we are going to do now. Uh, can we switch to two? So, I um, apologize because you won't see that much there. Okay, so this is the, the directory I have with all the jars. So you can see uh, basically the jars you will get on your, on your machine, but collected. So we have Charm Cloud Link for the cloud connection. We have Charm Down, Core, <coughs> Device, uh, Storage, which are the usual plugins we get to uh, uh, we use to access the native uh, services like Storage or uh, Device Resolution and so on. And we also see there JavaFX Base 11, JavaFX Base Controls, and JavaFX Graphics. Since I'm running uh, from Mac, I'm deploying the Mac artifacts. So obviously, those Mac artifacts won't work there. At least the part uh, that takes the well, it won't. I, I mean, at, at the end, they are just the, the APIs. So, but either way, I'm not going to use them. So what I'm going to use is uh, I have it here. So uh, uh, finally, we also see the, the maps jar and the 
proper project jar, which is called module maps. So, uh, yes, this is the command line uh, we are going to run, which is uh, sudo java 11 module path with the module path pointing to the javafx 11 uh, path, add modules, javafx control, and blue maps. Platform monocle, embedded monocle, and class path pointing to all those jars, and the main class, which in this case I'm going to do a small trick, I will explain it later. So I'm going to run, run a launcher and see if it is working. Okay, there you go. So this is connecting to the cloud actually, and on the Raspberry Pi side is running maps, and this red dot there is a JavaFX uh, node, a small circle for instance, and we are just simulating a small task, and you see uh, the maps are moving because there is a, a task to update the map every now and then, and Recall, this is a Raspberry Pi. We are retrieving maps from the internet. We are running at a, a small task to move the maps around. And you notice how smooth it was? Well, this is a Raspberry Pi 3B plus, or, yeah, Raspberry model B plus, so it's the last model, which is a really, really good model compared to the old versions, but either way, we are running Raspberry Pi on an embedded device, and performance-wise, or graphic-wise, is really, really performant, really, really smooth, so it's really uh, do the job for uh, your projects. Uh, if you have anything on, the, on a kiosk or something like that. So, uh, this is not uh, using uh, X, so we we can still see some command, some uh, uh, output lines below. So you see uh, that line says that it's retrieving the tile number 10, 507, 513, based on the, on the coordinates of this point and so on. At the same time, this uh, small demo is sending the data to the cloud and. With this setup, I cannot show you uh, how it works, but uh, basi uh, basically what it's doing is sending it to the cloud link, and the cloud link is broadcasting to uh, other clients that are listening to these uh, changes in, in this map position. So if we have uh, like a mobile device with, with us, using pretty much the same project, but instead of uh, writing the coordinates from your GPS, just listening to the coordinates from the cloud link. This, this is the only thing that will change on your project. You will have the same map with the same uh, circle moving based on the coordinates that come from the Raspberry Pi. Um, this is pretty much what I have to show you today. Um, apologies for the inconvenience with the, with the Raspberry Pi setup, but Fortunately, everything pretty much worked today, so I think we, we passed the test from this challenge today. If you have any questions? I've got another question. Is it with Gluon possible to write an iOS application? So the question was, uh, is it possible with Gluon uh, to write an iOS application? With Java, of course. With Java, of course, yes. The answer is yes, of course. You can write for Android, you can write for iOS, you can write for embedded, and for sure for desktop. So, if you have the time, there is a session at, I think it's 2.30, I, I can confirm you later. I have an, another session about Gluon Mobile running on Android and iOS. Okay. So, Raspberry Pi 3 supports both ARC 32 and ARC 64. Yes. Okay, so if I get right the question, uh, there are distributions for ARM for 64 bits, and we are, in this example, we are using the 32. 
So uh, you say that it, it, we should recommend instead to move to 64, right? Maybe. Maybe. So so far the problem is with the Raspbian distribution, which is 32. So most of the uh, common distributions for Raspberry Pi are 32. So we need to start moving that, but it's not our time. It's not our call. So yes, there are distributions for 64, and there are distributions for ARM for Java 11 64. But if you need to go to 64, there are solutions as well. Any more questions? So we are out of time. Yes, last one. Um, any licensing limitations, like you know, for you know, kind of embedding Java into? So uh, the question was: is there, is, Are there any license limitation? And the answer is, uh, Kevin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, JavaFX is uh, open source with GPL license. It's the same as the, as the JDK. So there are no commercial license on top of any of the things we have seen today, for instance. OK, so thank you very much for coming today. Thank you.